Welcome to another edition of Dan Frequently Asked Questions. In this edition, we're going to be discussing the difference between so-called deep water blackout and shallow water blackout. Keep watching. We got an inquiry from a diver asking what the difference is between so-called deep water blackout and shallow water blackout. Now I want to clarify off the bat that these terms are actually reserved for rebreather diving, either semi-closed or closed rebreathers. And the breath hold blackout is called hypoxia of ascent, but is frequently referred to as shallow water blackout in actually an incorrect application of that terminology. But it is so uh, entrenched in the diving community that it's frequently used synonymously. But they are very, very different. The reason for hypoxia of ascent after breath hold is usually in relation to hyperventilation, which drives out the CO2 and therefore it's prompt to get you breathing again or back to the surface in order to do so at the expense of very little additional oxygen and basically almost the same point where you would lose consciousness as a result of low oxygen. And your low oxygen alarm in your body has been deactivated as a result. Well, CO2 is the strongest stimulus for breathing. The problem is that if you are very trained, motivated, and you have the additional benefit of the descent, which causes compression of the thorax and the lungs and therefore increasing the PO2, the problem is that it actually feels as if there's adequate oxygen. And the CO2 is so low that when the prompt to return to the surface actually occurs during ascent with the re-expansion of the lungs, there is a precipitous drop in PO2 and a person loses consciousness. So that's why we specifically refer to this as hypoxia of ascent. Now shallow water blackout is different. It may be the result of breathing through a rebreather without adequate flushing, preparation and exhalation, making sure that the circuit is filled with what you are meant to be breathing during the dive, not what was in the loop prior to you using it or what is flooded into the rebreather from your body and lungs. Remember at one atmosphere, after just saturating in air, let alone diving, you will have accumulated at least one liter of nitrogen. And that is going to be released into your rebreather loop. Depending on the difference in the breathing mixture from essentially the gases dissolved in your body, the gradient for movement of gas into the rebreather is going to either be fast or slow. But the important thing is to realize that you need to flush both the loop and your body prior to using a rebreather adequately. And you need to consider the gas mixtures that you'll be using as well, so that they're compatible both for shallow and deeper water. So in brief, shallow water blackout can either be the result of hyperoxia, in other words, high oxygen pressure, for instance, if breathing 100% oxygen at a depth greater than six to eight meters, or lack of oxygen as a result of an inappropriate breathing mixture. Rarely in shallow water, it can be the result of CO2. Mostly though, the deep water blackout is a result of accumulation of CO2 due to failure of the scrubber or an inability to compensate for the increased density of the gas that you breathe, as well as the work associated with a particular dive. For those of you interested, you can actually look up deep dive rebreather fatalities. Just Google it or go to our Dan website and you will find a lot of information about these two conditions and the distinction between them. I hope that this video was useful 
and we thank you for the questions that always spark these discussions, your support for the channel and for Dan. Until next time, safe diving.